Hi, in this tutorial, I'll be giving a sample problem on the superposition of forces. So at the end of this video, you should be able to solve for the resultant force of concurrent forces acting on an object using the component method of vector addition. So when we say concurrent forces, those are just forces acting on the same object. And by solving for the resultant force, you can figure out what is that single force, uh, the magnitude and the direction, that can represent the overall effect of all those forces that are simultaneously acting on the same object. So that's it. And for the sample problem, we have two dogs pull horizontally on ropes attached to a post. The angle between these ropes is 50 degrees. If Nymeria, the first dog, exerts a force of 290 newtons and Ghost exerts a force of 332 newtons, solve for the magnitude of the resultant force and the angle it makes with Nymeria's rope. So uh, take note that in this particular problem, we're not given any illustration. We are just um, given the description of the problem, the scenario, and it, it's part of our goal or task to um, make an illustration of the problem. So as opposed to my previous video where I gave the, uh, where the problem actually provided the illustrations or sketch of the problem, uh, for this one, we're going to have to visualize it ourselves and um, come up with a sketch. So that's the additional challenge compared to the previous video sample problems that I just uploaded. So for this, um, you have to like strategize how you want these uh, two forces to like appear. So first you have Nymeria and Ghost and both of them are tied on separate ropes. Okay. So th the main thing that we have to take into consideration is that there is a 50 degree gap between the two ropes. So it doesn't matter where in the Cartesian plane these two forces lie. But the point is that they have to be like 50 degrees apart. So in terms of strategy, I would choose to put Nymeria on this um, part of the Cartesian plane, so positive x-axis. Uh, you might be wondering why, miss? Um, is it because you're right-handed or nothing? Just, um, you just, it's just your mood. <laughs> no, actually, if you look at the problem, it's asking us to solve for the resultant force and the angle must be the angle that the resultant force makes with respect to Nymeria's rope. So meaning to say, it would be good to put Nymeria's rope along the x-axis because as you know, when we measure our angle, we actually use the positive x-axis as the reference. So it would be good to put Nymeria along the positive x-axis because Nymeria would be our reference when we measure our angle. And, and that just coincides with the fact that the positive x-axis is also our usual reference in the usual problem-solving technique. So this, this is the best thing to do, okay? Next, of course, so that's Nymeria, okay, and then you have a second force acting on the rope, so that is another dog tied onto it, and that is 50 degrees away from the first dog, which is Nymeria. So the second dog, uh, yeah, for Nymeria, this is the tension force on his or her rope. This is the second dog, Ghost, and the tension force for that rope is 332 newtons. So that's the setup of our problem, so we did not um, do anything wrong, they are 50 degrees apart. And that's all that matters in the problem. You can put them in some other quadrant. But again, I've explained why it's best to put Nymeria on the positive x-axis. The next thing we have to do is to set up this table for us to be more organized. Um, so first, we're going to uh, list down the forces that are acting on the, um, on the pole, by the way, or post. This is top view, just to clarify. Okay, and then uh, we'll also put the angle that th those forces make with respect to the positive x-axis. We'll solve for f sub x and then also f sub y. So for the forces acting, of course, um, let's start with Nymeria. So that's 290 newtons along the rope pointing towards Nymeria. And then the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis is obviously 0 degrees because, again, we are reporting the angle counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. This is just a convention. Uh, your, your teacher or some other textbooks might do something else. But in this particular strategy that I'm discussing, I want the angle to be measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So since Nymeria's rope is exactly along the positive x-axis, then it has to be uh, this angle has to be zero degrees, meaning to say they're just overlapping. Next, let's proceed with the second dog. So we have Ghost, and the force acting on his rope is 332 newtons. And the angle that it makes with a positive x-axis, if measured counterclockwise, is 310 degrees. Miss, how did you know? Well, of course, um, a full circle would be uh, 360 degrees. So minus 50, 360 minus 50, that would be 310 or if you want to uh, have a more hassle life, then 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 40. Yeah, that should be 310 degrees, um, this one. 
And then let's clean the board. Okay, going forward, let's solve for f sub x. So f sub x is just the component of these forces that are effective along the x-axis of this particular object, the post. So to solve for f sub x, we have to use the formula f cosine theta. Miss, where did you get this? Uh, in the previous video, I explained how we derive it. But for the purpose of this video where we just um, want to have a sample problem, yeah, just follow as I say, the formula for f sub x is f cosine theta. And take note that the theta in this equation has to be an angle that is measured with respect to the x-axis. And we can plug this in because these are all measured with respect to the x-axis. So the formula will work correctly. Let's do it, starting with force number one. So solving for the x component of force number one, uh, we have the equation, again, f sub x equals f cosine theta. It's just this, but take note, I just added the subscripts one to uh, for us not to be confused, to be sh always sure that we are um, dealing with force number one. So that's Nymeria's rope. And then we have 290 newtons for the tension along her rope. And then cosine zero, uh, we're just plugging in, by the way, do that in your calculator, you should get 290 newtons, okay? Actually, if you don't perform the calculation, it would be pretty obvious that F sub X is actually 290 newtons because as you can see, Nymeria's rope is actually acting horizontal with respect to the post. So this is also, um, whatever is the tension force along the rope, that would automatically be the value of your F sub X. So let's write it here. Next. Solving for the x component of force number 2, or the tension force along the rope of ghost, we have the same equation, we just use the subscript 2 to just be clear that this is for ghost, the second dog. And then we plug in, so tension along that rope is 332 newtons, and then the angle it makes with respect to the positive x-axis is 310 degrees. Use your calculator, you're supposed to get 230 newtons for the x component of that force, okay? So that's it for all the x components. At this point, we're going to solve for the y components of the forces acting on the, uh, acting against the post. So that is f sub y equals f sine theta. Again, the theta here should be something we measured with respect to the x axis, just like these two. So let's solve for that. So for force number one, Nymeria, we have, uh, again, it's just this formula, but you have the subscript one representing Nymeria. And then we plug in. So it's still 290, but be careful for y-axis. We're now, we're now using sine instead of cosine. And then the angle is 0 degrees. Then you plug it in your calculator. You're supposed to get 0 degrees. By the way, it's actually obvious, like even without calculation, that f sub y for Nymeria's rope is actually 0 because you can see this is a horizontal force. Uh, if you look at this top view, the perspective that we're using, um, because f sub y is obviously a vertical component. So if you have a horizontal force like this, then definitely f sub y is 0. Next, let's do it for um, force number 2. So um, same equation with subscript 2. We plug in the given, 332 newtons. Um, and then for the angle, that's sine 310 degrees. Use your calculator. You're supposed to get negative 254 newtons, okay? So these are the components of, or these are the x components of the forces acting on the post. And then these are the y or the vertical components of the forces acting on the post. Uh, since we're solving for the resultant force ag against this um, post, what we need to do next is to sum up the x and the y components. So first, for f sub x, that should be 290 plus 213. You should get 503 newtons for the r sub x. Miss, what's r sub x? Is it uh, the doctor's prescription? <laughs> no, <laughs> r sub x means um, resultant force along x, or it's basically the summation of the forces acting along x. That's why we added these two. And it represents the overall force acting along the x-axis. And for f sub y, we have to do the same thing. We just add 0 and negative 2, 5, 4. So we're supposed to get negative 254 newtons as our resultant force along y, meaning to say overall, as a result of these two forces, um, their overall effect along the y-axis is a 254 newton force directed downward. That's why it's negative. Okay. Um, what do we do next? Is it the final answer, the yellow ones? No, not yet. Um, to solve for the resultant force, the next step would be this. So put them aside. You have R sub X and R sub Y. You know the sum of the forces acting along X and Y components. 
Uh, next, we visualize them as vector arrow. So for R sub X, it's actually 503 newtons and it's positive, so it's rightward. Um, it would look like this if you represent it vectorally. And then for um, R sub Y, it would be downward because it's negative. And this is now your vector representation of our R sub Y. So it's R sub Y. Now take note that if you have these two vectors, the resultant force would be represented by an arrow that is drawn from the tail of the first vector towards the head of the second vector. So it would be this arrow, and that is our resultant force, the one that we're looking for. Meaning to say, uh, we're basically summing up or we're adding up R sub X and R sub Y by doing simple vector addition. This is actually polygon method. Anyway, so that's our resultant force there. And to solve for that, we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem, which is c squared equals a squared plus b, b squared, because as you know, in Pythagorean theorem, if you know the magnitude or the length of the two other legs or any two legs, you can solve for um, the magnitude or the length of a third of the third side. Okay, so in this case, we want to determine r, which is represented by c or the hypotenuse of our, our right triangle. Then definitely we can solve for it because we have a and b, the two other legs, represented by r sub x and r sub y. Okay. Next, we need to get the square root of both sides of the equation for us to cancel the exponent 2. So this becomes c equals square root of a squared plus b squared. And then we rewrite it into a physics equation because I don't like this. It's generic. But if I replace c with r, the resultant or the hypotenuse of the right triangle, I can have a physics equ equation and a and b then must be replaced by r sub x and r sub y because those are the two other legs or a and b in our right triangle here. That's it. Next, we plug in the given. So r sub x is this, and then r sub y is this. If you use your calculator, you're supposed to get 563 newtons for the magnitude of our resultant force. So that is our answer for the magnitude, okay? So meaning to say overall, these two forces are equivalent to 563 newtons in terms of magnitude. But the important question is, where is this resultant force pointing or at what angle does it make with respect to Nymeria's rope in particular, okay? So if we use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the magnitude, for the direction, we're going to have a different approach. But first, let's go back to our right triangle. So if you look at this, of course, your triangle has a theta, the angle that it makes with respect to the x-axis, because by convention, that's normally what we pick as our theta. And for you to know the value of this theta, you can use your r sub y or, or opposite side and then the r sub x, which is the adjacent side. And because you have the opposite and adjacent sides known in your right triangle, you can use the tangent function because tangent function is opposite over adjacent. And if you replace those math expressions with physics expressions, this would be r sub y over r sub x based on our figure. And then for us to cancel tan, because look, we're solving for theta, right? To cancel tangent, you have to you have to take the arc tangent of both sides of the equation because that um that way you can actually cancel the tangent expression on the left side of your equation. Just some mathematical rule, okay? So you can have theta left on the left side, and then that will be theta equals arc tangent times times r sub y over r sub x. And then we plug in our given. So r sub y is negative 254. r sub x is 503. And then I'm going to teach you later how to do it in the calculator. But for now, I'm just going to show the answer. The theta is actually 26.8 degrees below the positive x axis. Um, miss, how do you know the below the positive axis thing? It's pretty simple. Since r sub x is positive, you would know that the theta is measured with respect to the positive x axis. And then for the expression below, uh, miss y not above, why is it below? Well, you will write below the x axis if the r sub y is negative. And if the r sub y is positive, it should be above the x axis, whatever x axis you have, negative or positive. Okay, so that's it. And then again, just to recall, in the previous video, I showed you this table. And this is, uh, this is like a guide on how you can express or report the direction based on the respective values of r sub x and r sub y. So as you can notice, again, whenever r sub y is positive, your um, theta will be measured above the x-axis. And then whenever it's negative, it will be below your positive or negative axis. And then the sign, I mean, whether it's negative or positive axis will be determined by the sign of your r sub x. So it's that simple. Also, going forward, for the calculator thing, because you might not know how to do this, um, miss, how do you do uh, arctangent times 
negative 254 over 503 in the calculator. So first, you have to press negative 254 division sign, and then 503 or the divisor, press equal sign, press shift, or second function or second F in uh, some other calculator brands, and then send that to 2366 for Globe subscribers. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you have to press tangent afterwards or tan, <gasps> press equal sign, and then you're supposed to get 26.8. <laughs> degrees for your at theta, okay? <laughs> so anyway, uh, just a bit of a, what's this? Additional information, yeah, this is important. Um, So yeah, we know the fact that the angle that we got is measured with respect to Nymeria's rope, right? Because, um, yeah, it's below the positive x-axis and Nymeria's rope is actually there. So, <laughs> but apart from that, apart from this way of saying the answer below the positive x-axis, you can also say, um, the resultant force is 563 newtons, 26.8 degrees away from the Nymeria's rope. That's another way of saying it. And then you can also say, simply say, I mean, as a physics teacher, just for me, maybe your teacher is strict, but for me as a teacher, I would accept saying, I would accept students saying R equals 563 newtons and then 26.8 degrees. Um, why miss? Are you that lenient? <laughs> Not really. It's just that. Um, the problem specifically said that the angle should be measured with, re with respect to Nymeria's rope. And as you know, um, we use Nymeria's rope through, as, as, as our reference throughout all the angle measurement. We all started measuring the angle from this, um, from this direction. So, so yeah, when you say 26.8 degrees is the angle that came out, then it should be clear automatically that this is the angle that the resultant force makes with Nymeria's rope, okay? Now let's evaluate the answer because it's um yeah it's 26.8 degrees below the positive x axis so that's probably around here and it's 563 newtons uh, does it make sense yeah for me it makes sense because it's uh it's in between the two forces that are acting which is obviously sensible and uh, again in terms of physical interpretation it simply means that the overall force that this um post is kind of feeling is directed in this direction as a result of two forces acting simultaneously on that post so that's it and then so at this point i'd like to talk about a few conceptual applications of this topic so in structural engineering definitely the principle of superposition of forces is important because it allows engineers to properly design structures like this bridge for example by taking into account the different forces acting on the object or like the parts of the bridge so for instance if a bridge experiences forces from traffic loads wind and its own weight then engineers need to analyze each of these forces separately. Then they add the effects together to predict the overall impact on the structure to keep it uh, stable. Okay, and then also for navigation, specifically for um, aviation, the superposition of forces is important because, uh, for instance, when a plane encounters crosswinds, for example, the wind can uh, be pushed sideways when there are um, crosswinds that are um, pushing it against its sides and it can normally cause of course the airplane to like drift off its course so to counteract that the pilots need to adjust where the nose is pointing um, and it should actually point slightly into the wind because this way it can compensate for the wind's force and it can allow the plane to move forward along its intended path for accurate navigation so that's all. And then this is the summary of the problem solving steps that we followed. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.